Hello, what's up everyone? My name is Jose Guadalupe Olivares. I am so happy to be here with the Breakbeat Poets. Uh, this is chapter six of the live series um, celebrating the debut chapbook of Janelle Pineda. The book is called Lineage of Rain. If it's not already in your queue, you need to get like 10 more copies. It's an incredible, beautiful book. I'm so excited to celebrate this book. Um, I want to take a second to acknowledge that uh, a lot of things are messed up right now, that we're still in the middle of pandemic, that we're in the middle of a devastating cold um, that is really threatening many of our most um, our most vulnerable communities. You know what I'm saying? And I want to say that if you are here, um, then we welcome you here, and we hope that this moment of poetry gives you a chance to breathe, right? Before joining you live, Faye Hernandez, who we're going to hear from in a little while, led us through a breathing exercise, and it reminded me to ground myself in spirit, in breath, in body, and I invite you to take this moment to stop checking Twitter momentarily, to be fully grounded in listening to one another, to be here present with all of us. Because though, you know, there are moments where I wonder what's the purpose of poetry in a pandemic, in the middle of crisis, when I read poets like Janelle Pineda, when I read poets like Kay Ulande Berry, when I read poets like Vanessa Angelica Villarreal, when I read poets like Faye Hernandez and Ji Yun Yoon, I am reminded again and again that poetry is important, that poetry is powerful. And in that spirit, I want to welcome all of you here today and say thank you for joining us. Thank you for being here. Thank you for celebrating Janelle, which is what we're going to do again and again. Um, I'm so excited. I'm so excited. I'm more nervous about this than I am, than I was like at my own book release. I'm just, I think it's a very special thing to get to celebrate the debut project of someone um, who is so incredible, so talented, and so kind, and such a great community member. So I'm just really happy to be able to share in this moment. And without further delay, we're going to jump right into it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to read the order of the poets that you will hear from tonight, and I will read their bios, um, and then we'll kick it off. So without further delay, we will hear from the following poets in this order. K. Ulandai Barrett is a poet, performer, and cultural strategist. Barrett's latest book, More Than Organs, received the 2021 Stonewall Honor Book Award in Literature by the American Library Association. They have featured at the Lincoln Center, the UN Symphony Space, the Poetry Project, Princeton University, NYU, the Dodge Poetry Foundation, the Hemispheric Institute, and Brooklyn Museum. They've received fellowship invitations from McDowell, Lambda Literary, Drunken Boat, Vona, The Homeschool, VCCA, Munson Arts, and Macondo. They are a three times Push Cart Prize nominee and a two times Best of the Net nominee. Their contributions are found in the New York Times, The Advocate, Asian American Literary, Literary Review, Vogue, PBS NewsHour, The Rumpus, Academy of American Poets, Color Lines, Bitch Magazine, Frontier Poetry, Auto Straddle, Nylon, and more. They have written two poetry books, when the chant comes from Topside Press and more than organs from Sibling Rivalry Press. They currently reside in New York City, New Jersey and remix their mama's recipes with the company of their jolly dog. Next, you will hear from Faye Hernandez, born in 1993 in Chihuahua, Mexico, is an Inglewood raised immigrant, trans, non-binary visual artist, writer and healer. Currently, they are the president of the Advisory Board for Gender Justice, Los Angeles. They have been published in Poetry, the Oxford Review of Books, Frontier, NPR's Code Switch, The Breakbeat Poets, Volume 4, Latinx, Pink Magazine, amongst others. 
Faye is the author of Hood Criatura from Sundress Publications, and Faye collects Pokemon plushies. Next, we will hear from Vanessa Angelica Villarreal, was born in the Rio Grande Valley to Mexican immigrants. She is the recipient of a 2019 Whiting Award and the author of the award-winning collection Beast Meridian from uh, Nomi Press, a 2019 Kate Tufts Discovery Award finalist and winner of the John A. Robertson Award for Best First Book of Poetry from the Texas Institute of Letters. Her work has appeared in the New York Times, the Paris Review, Boston Review, Los Angeles Review of Books, The Rumpus, The Academy of American Poets Poem a Day, BuzzFeed Reader and Poetry Magazine where her poem F Equals Root Future was honored with the 2019 Friends of Literature Prize. She is a recipient of fellowships from Canto Mundo and Jack Jones Literary Arts and is a doctoral candidate in English literature and creative writing at the University of Southern California in Los Angeles, where she is raising her son with the help of a loyal dog. Find her on Twitter at Vanessa ID. Uh, next, we will hear from Ji Yun Yoon, is a Korean American poet from the San Francisco Bay Area winner of the 2019 Prairie Schooner Prize in Poetry, her debut collection, Some Are Always Hungry, an urgently beautiful collection, was published by University of Nebraska Press in September 2020. Her work has appeared in the Best New Poets, Adroit Amongst Other Places. Um, and last but not least, we will hear from Janelle Pineda, uh, Janelle Pineda is a Los Angeles born Salvadoran poet and educator. She has performed her poetry internationally in both English and Spanish and been published in Lit Hub, Pink, The Breakbeat Poets Volume 4, Latinx, and The Wandering Song, Central American Writing in the US, among others. As a Marshall Scholar, she holds an MA in Creative Writing and Education from Goldsmiths, University of London. Janelle's debut poetry chapbook, Lineage of Rain, is here. It is a reason we are gathered, and I'm so, so excited for all of this. So kicking us off, uh, where, wherever you're at, I need you to put your hands together, you know, make the neighbors jealous that they're not currently tuned in, maybe put them on to the YouTube link. Please y'all put your hands together for Kay Ulandai Berry. Hey everybody, look at this world. Janelle Pineda, Lineage of Rain. Such a blessing, it's such an honor to be here. I'm currently on occupied Lanape land. And let me tell you, I can feel your book in your power every day and I'm so pleased and so honored to share space with you and share table with you. So my first poem is a poem I think you'll respect because it's about the aunties and it's about the food. And I thought, this is a Janelle poem. Aunties love it when the seafood is on sale. Argyle Redline, Chicago, Illinois, June 1996. In the summertime, the women and my family spin sago like planets, making even Saturn blush. They split the leaves of Kong Kong spinach with river bed softness. Yo, they are precise. Measure rice by palm lines with laughter and season broth made from creatures last gasps. You'd swear, you'd swear they were teenagers again, talking gossip, stretching limbs, elastic, durable like seaweed. Come dinner time, skilled mouths slurp through the domes of shrimp and crab. This is not a vegan poem. They prize the fat. The angles of their teeth splinter claw, snap sinew, dip tart into sweet, then back again, bitterness balanced. Succulence on succulence is to find flesh from even the smallest of spaces. Women, women who swallow whole, who make a pile of bones, who suck teeth, taste every morsel until all that is left is a quiet room and shells of what once was. To the daughters of dried fishnets, 
whose dreams dragged on sand, dragged into this country. They bring home recipe years later. Flick joints to garlic, culinary remix. Teach my cousin, oi, listen to me. This is how we stay alive. Morning in the Midwest by taste bud. And afterwards, afterwards, my titas, they keep the ocean husks for another meal because to get a good deal is to double. And anybody from an island will tell you that that is where the true flavor is. And what is, what is hunger anyway? But the carving out of emptiness, the learning to always, always save something for later. Thank you. Always gotta have a food poem for you, Janelle. That's how we build. Uh, this last poem is a love poem. I don't write love poems, so here we go. It's for spoonies and spoonies, sick for sick, people who are depressed. So for depressed, for depressed, sick for sick. Her body patched swollen skin. Hair flex gone rogue, mismatched knees, ache knits, quilt throughout, curvature. Curvature is a soft thing. She said, if we hum close, close enough that our, our chests touch, shared breath comes from belly up, that that, mm, that is not platonic. Now, breathe same air. Nostril kinetic by way of brow cleft, pirouette of migraine, syllables twirl temples, strain is something to love here together. When nerves are ablaze, I'm told to be blanket. Lay my torso on theirs, abdomen to abdomen, core to core. Is this what a field does to a hill? Spill it with poppies. I wait on their skill, how they will sigh. The human body is heating pad, limbs, bonfire, flip sheets. You can't reverse sick today. Today, beloved, we don't want to. Chest pulse, soft slick. Come spring, <laughs> come spring. We never do this again. There's there's only the memory of it. How her lungs cathedral, how I prayed there on the ledge of inhale, sternum sacred, coughed him, spasm, luminescence. Syllables stretched, muscles sacraments more than splay. Us, petals in overlap. Us, an ampersand on fire. Thank you so much, Janelle. Thank you, Haymarket. Thank you all y'all marvelous poets who I crush on every day. I'm so excited to celebrate you, Janelle, and to celebrate you all. Give it up one more time for Kay Ulandai Berry. That was phenomenal. I love both of those poems. I'm so thankful to be here sharing space with all of you. One more time, if you just wandered in, you know, you were looking for a place to get warm, you don't know exactly where you're at. This is the Lineage of Rain release party, one of many that we hope to do. Uh, the poet that we're honoring is Janelle Pineda, and you are in the right place. So make yourselves comfortable, get familiar with, you know, where the bathrooms are, where the exits are. And uh, yeah, just, just get ready because uh, it's, it's gonna be an incredible show. Next up, we have, um, let me get my script together. We have Faye Hernandez. So please y'all, wherever you're at, get real loud, make a lot of real noise for Faye Hernandez. Hi y'all, uh, um, I'm super emotional to be here. I can't cry because I did my makeup for you, <laughs> Janelle. Um, I'm very grateful to be here. Um, our books were naked in my mom's office. This is pre-COVID. And we were just trying to like figure out the order to our poems. We were thinking of titles. Um, and it just, 
it, it's like all just a blur and it's like three screens are happening at the same time and I'm like seeing us hunched over working on lineage of brain and here we are celebrating and Jose you were right in saying like I'm that I was more nervous right now than I was for my own like book launch. So thank you for having me, Janelle, and all of y'all amazing as poets. The first piece I'm gonna spit is Angel de la Guardia. Mighty tall like a palm tree, he looks down at the ant of me. Fish eye lens follow me, traces my drunk cruiser bike, zigzagging round the new speed bumps my savior. My God stands above me with feet in cement. My only Angel de la Guardia, brown body with black fingers holding every piece of heaven. His fingers adorned with silver black birds, his fingers nets in case I fall into Inglewood from the sky again. A lost star on display while a spaceship peruses in front of Randy's on wheels. My God always holds something. The memory of an alley fight, a mouse in the grip of a silver black bird drive by a homie smacking his baby mama. There is no corner. My angel don't post up at chin up, cast a skinny shadow over the back homes we lived in, over the empty lots with fickle weeds peeking their heads through the netted fences out of hiding, out the closet. My God hides me, my obese, tired body with its skinny shadow. I gasped for breath looking side to side on the hottest day in Inglewood. My angel spreads its wings for me while I repair the loose chain of me on the corner. My hands bloodied with grease, the bare toothed sidewalks laugh at me. The alley fights roar, I hope Eddie is okay. Momo didn't get shot, thank God. I'll call you later. And when the heat recedes and the ocean mist flocks the bruised streets, my angel vibrates with the heat of phone calls shooting through its arms. Mothers call their children. My God holds witness that she called, even though she knew que Dios me cuidaba. Telepatha is my angel that followed me block to block, knowing he, want, he watched the ant of me, memorizing the streets, potholes, the last places people were seen alive, pointing at all my friends' homes, lit in the evening glow, eating dinner as a family. I memorized the streets to make sure I knew where I came from. My angel, my mom, taught me how to love my sky sliced and be grateful for our slice. Be full with the peace of life we have. Thank you. That's my first piece. Um, the next one is an after poem for one of Janelle's pieces that I know that she's gonna read today. And so I'm gonna try to honor this piece with as much love and respect. Um, and I can't wait to hear your poem. My piece is titled Conception. And this is after Janelle Pineda's In Another Life. The migration never happened, but somehow you and I still exist like desert rose. We know only the memory of crystalline petals and not the tumbling of betrayal that created us. Forget the almost gunned down pregnant woman, the jealous wife, the caldo de res. There is no bus to the maquiladoras. There is no border. There is no drowning. There is only ocotillo and tortillas hechas a mano. The pink house and the backyard wall decorated with broken blue and yellow tile a heaping plate of buñuelos and abuelitas canela cafe waiting to be disappeared into our bellies. In this life, our people are not things of Chihuahua City, but whole worlds living amongst the Sierra Madre, Basiaciachi, and Samalayuca. Everywhere, we are pronghorn antelope when we tire of our anatomy, playing unhunted, fully skinned animals fed. Tronadera does not mean gunshots, and tunas bloom in every place water gallons are left behind. My name will still mean faith, this time in a language that recognizes me, a language I know how to speak. My grandmother is still a singer, although I am not a writer. In this life, I don't have to be. This poem somehow still exists. It is told in my mother's native songs and she makes worry dissolve like lime and warm honey, throat refreshed and free of silence. You and I don't leave each other across the border, grasping angrily at each other's heart in search of stay. 
We meet in the grassy fields by Lago El Rincón, my arms overflowing with mojarras del Siroco and Vicente Fernandez tapes. And together we graze the clouds passing before your 1966 Ford pickups windshield. We watch sunset fall over Nica. We call our own and don't fear its stripping. I bite into your lips softly, sucking color from substance, nibbling the memory of today's conception. Our laughter echoes across the surface of the lake, one where we don't fear our finding. We do not have to hide here. We do not have to hide anywhere. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much for having me, Janelle. I'm so excited to hear you and all of the other lovely poets. Yes, yes. Give it up again for Faye Hernandez. The name of the book is Hood Criatura. I know you thought you were leaving here with one book, but it turns out you have a bunch of books to buy. Uh, the name of Kay Ulandai Barrett's books are When the Chant Comes from Topside Press and More Than Organs from Sibling Rivalry Press. I'm sure that Haymarket will drop the links into the YouTube comments, or one of you can drop the links into the YouTube comments. Um, make sure you get the book, support the poets, and these are sustenance. These poems are medicine. It will move you. It will help you in some emotional capacity. Um, so make sure you get those poems. Next up, we have Vanessa Angelica Villarreal. Um, the name of Vanessa's book is Beast Meridian. It's incredible. Make sure you go get it. Please, y'all, wherever you're at, put your hands together for Vanessa Angelica Villarreal. Thank you, Jose. And Janelle, I'm so proud of you and I'm so happy for you. I'm so just honored to be here to celebrate your book. Um, and I'm just honored to be in community with you. You just, you love your people and you love your people so hard and it's so evident in your work. So um, I hope I can do your work justice. Um, Okay, so I just have two poems. Um, they're new. They're even sadder. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how I did that. Um, so here we go. Alas. And God created the waves, and we the graves beneath. Bodies made particulate by the force of water against water, water against rock against time. I descend into the deep in a kind of prayer. Listen to its centuries. Make me pay, will you? Make me hurt. Instead, I am held so that I might listen to myself. The battered sand shines back its longing to be a star, a planet aching for collapse. And all I can respond is, please make me good. Listen, I have not suffered. I have no right to these red wings of rage, no right to the echo in my cup. I am a maker of half-truths painted over in gold. My dress leaves a trail of desert where once there was forest floor, make me pay. The rotting teeth in my head bloom poppies of blood I spit in offering to atone for the lies I've told. They are not lies. Then whose memories are these? I want to be good, oh God, please make me. For every wound I witness, I find myself holding the knife. I too have already been cut in half more than once, more than one way, cut and cut, and I useless still holding this cord in my fist that connects back to no one, but the whiteness that replaces memory. Another root system obliterated by the bulldozer on my back. I have no right to these red wings of rage. A crab walks alone on the tilted sand, oblivious to the cruel enormity of the world. A wave is coming. I can save it. How dare I presume to save it? Please, the water is coming. What is the answer? Please make me good. Um, the next one is Settlement, um, and it's for 
all the immigrant daughters out there, especially eldest immigrant daughters, we just, we really go through it. So <laughs> Settlement. I flee to the edge of this country in the two stag dark, stand on an escarpment undoing itself in ash. Not yet a boy, I eat still the figs that bloat with inverted blossoms, when halved, sometimes a blonde wasp and called in its violet lobe. This, of course, is the dream body eating its omen. California moons, a coast breathing oranges, a fire fast as horses, duplicitous husband, a steel great border extending its long law into the ocean, a wave halved. Never trust beauty to represent brutality. I can give you no language that will free the child from her cage, make no meaning that unfloods the world, no verse that can unfire a bullet. I eat the spine of God to stay alive. Eldest daughter to an eldest daughter of an eldest daughter, I sit as in three child mothers at the river's door. Obedient bruise root, rebel virgin, doomed bride. Translate passage, the girl abandoned in a sinking marshland will never be named in America. America is just another boy with bad intentions, another flooding plot of discovery drowning its ever lousier yellows. How many daughters have been paid to the ship? Dissolution, to witness my own water burial. At the cut bank, knife the rope and split the dress, maiden myself taut as an elm bow drawn, thighs seized red holding a dormant knot. And every father's cruelty to his daughter is a husband recognizing the danger of himself. Every man a heat trapped rancor, every promise a demon's gem. Mirror born, the wolf girl will learn two names in the twinned land. Tense with blood memory. Checkpoint. Border patrol asks, place of birth. I speak. Exit the vehicle, legs open. The moon enthroned in oaks shines through the wood lace over the state. A father in the grasses. A headlight cleaves mother and boy. Another child at the edge of this country. Another body denied a metaphor. What regret can be daughtered deeper? Thank you. Thank you. Yo, that was Vanessa Angelica Villarreal. Give it up one more time. I know it's quarantine. You may feel like this is just, you know, uh, a theoretical ask, but I'm actually telling you to clap. So make some noise. You know what I'm saying? I want you to make noise. Um, if you are just joining us or, you know, I, I used to be the marketing manager for a nonprofit. And so they told us that we had to repeat ourselves to kind of get the point across. So I'm gonna keep repeating myself. We are here to celebrate the chapbook Lineage of Rain by the incredible poet, Janelle Pineda. Um, make sure you go get the book. I'm sure Haymarket Books is dropping the link into the chat right now, haymarketbooks.org. Um, the name of the book is Lineage of Rain. We're gonna keep telling you because it's a beautiful book and you should get it. Um, next up, we have Ji Yun Yoon. Um, Ji Yun Yoon is the author of Some Are Always Hungry. Um, please y'all, wherever you are, make a lot of noise. This is not theoretical, actually do it. Um, give it up for Ji Yun Yoon. Wow, thank you so much um, for having me. And just, I feel a little bit dazzled and dazed from all the readings that happened before me. So excuse me if my voice shakes or if I seem a little out of it, that was just incredible to listen to. I feel so fortified and just um, odd. And I'm so excited to be here to celebrate um, the release of Janelle's chapbook. I'm just so honored. So um, when I was choosing my two poems, I had um, Janelle's poem that was published in Pink on my mind, I decided to choose two poems that were um, missives to family members. Um, 
and it ended up being a little bit more of a downer than I intended, but um, I chose these with Janelle's poems in mind. This first poem is called Scar Watching. In Seoul, there are no stars in spring, only coal fog and dust from the Gobi Desert choking out the lights. Stripped down to his dignity before the TV, grandpa eats a sand pear. His body appalls, but I can't stop looking. Years ago, Salt took my father, my grandfather by the hand and led him near the next world's fortress cities. Salt, which we would have thrown over our shoulders after the wake to keep his ghost away, but he didn't die, no. Salt let him go and he resurfaced on a steel table with constellations of scars over his heart. The sand pear sugars down his palm, carving a river of nectar. If I cut him, would there be blood or milk? What runs in the aqueducts of his interior city? The salt wrecked squalor of viscera, his vessels narrow alleyways. I hate to see him this way but don't miss the cruel man of my youth whose love was seesaw and conditional or the way his wife tells time in upturned tables, pots of fish spine soup turned on their sides. I don't want to be angry at one who may die soon. I love him, but don't need his love back. And therein lies the difference between wound and want, but is this not a manner of bonding, to be awed by his scars, which I watch in place of stars in this smog-dimmed city, to pick out familiar parabolas mapped out in human meat, bottomless kite of Libra, or the chaos of Orion, there where the flesh purples and knots, and my grandfather, at last bovine and familial, slowly returning to whatever flooding city he fought himself back from. When we rest, we will rest in ourselves. Um, this next poem is called Homonyms, and it begins with um, this definition of a Korean word, teuda, which, can, um, which means to burn or singe by fire, but it could also mean to carry or to give a ride. Homonyms. I burned you. You grew up burning, bundled on my back. Petulant petal, jaundiced thing, plucked from my amniotic rib. I had you suck the milk of dandelions to take the yellow from your skin. Sliced antlers rendered to wretched tea to temper your bloodied coughing. I dislodge your limbs in hopes you'd grow to something live and desired, the suggestion of a girl, and you did, until your girlhood grew dangerous as it does for all girls. I've been sorry ever since. You burned on the coattails of our immigration, singed your tongue on America until no tongue was rightfully yours, until you came home disgraced having pissed yourself instead of asking to go to the restroom in English. But I wasn't ashamed. I burned you gently in my arms, burned you all the way home, away from the laughter, burned you against my breast to safety. And daughter, you will not forget these aches you learned. If you have a daughter, you will burn her too. Thank you so much. Wow. Give it up, everyone, for Ji Yun Yoon. That was incredible. Thank you to Ji Yun. Thank you to Kay Ulandai Barrett. Thank you to Vanessa Angelica Villarreal. Thank you, Faye Hernandez, um, for building the foundation and for, you know, helping us celebrate this incredible book, um, Lineage of Rain. And now it is time uh, to bring up Janelle. Janelle is the reason we are all gathered here. I'm going to read Janelle's bio one more time because it's an official bio and because Janelle has earned all of this. Um, 
Janelle Pineda is a Los Angeles born Salvadoran poet and educator. She has performed her poetry internationally in both English and Spanish and been published in Lit Hub, Pink, The Breakbeat Poets Volume 4 Latinx, and The Wandering Song, Central American Writing in the US, among others. As a Marshall Scholar, she holds an MA in Creative Writing and Education from Goldsmiths, University of London. Janelle's debut poetry chapbook, Lineage of Rain, is here. Um, you know, Janelle, just like casually, when we were gathering to kind of, you know, go through the rundown mentioned like, oh yeah, you know, people in London are tuning in, you know, it's like 1 a.m. over there, it's no big deal. I told them they didn't have to, but they they demanded to be present for my book release. So this is an international book release that we're doing here. Shout out to everybody in Europe. You know, I know if I was in Australia, I'd still be tuning in, listening to this. So thank you wherever you're at. Um, about Janelle's book, I just want to say that it is a beautiful book in that, you know, sometimes um, when women, when people of color write books, uh, the labels that get attached are words like urgent and necessary. And someone is ringing my doorbell, ignore that. Um, and, you know, I think that sometimes, you know, those words are, are a little bit distracting. And I think for me, when I read Janelle's poetry, the two words that come to mind are first of all, beauty, like the, the way that you make the worlds, the people, the feelings come to life is really beautiful and fills me with awe. And then secondly, the word that comes to mind is vision. And I think that you have such a clear vision for you know, how you mean to love your people and the world that you want to help us build in Los Angeles and beyond that. And, you know, I'm getting shivers just thinking about like how inspiring it is to read your work. I really, really mean that. It's an honor to be here. I'm thankful that you allowed me to be a part of this. And I'm so excited for all the books that you are to write down the line. And I'm sure that wherever you are at right now, that you feel the same way. So you know what time it is. Uh, wherever you are, if you're in London, if you're in Los Angeles, if you're on the East Coast, I know this is an international gathering. If you are in El Salvador, if you are wherever you are, please y'all put your hands together for Janelle Pineda. Hello everyone, I feel so like just excited and grateful to to be here and to be able to hold this book in my hands like what what is anything um and i just have to say there's so much love and care and support that went into into this this being a thing you know um i was a super obnoxious little kid i was like six years old and like i'm gonna write a book one day just so you know and then it happened like it happened um, so I'm really just very feeling very blessed. And I know that, you know, this has been a wild year for, for so many of us. And, um, yet I'm really grateful to, to the people in my life who have reminded me that we still need to celebrate and we still need to honor, um, these, these moments. Um, so thank you all for being here. Um, I'm going to course read some poems from the book um i'm going to start with uh a, a poem that i think I, like faye facebook about it so this is um in another life and it's also the first poem of the book and the reason for that is that i want my work to be a reminder of what is possible right even as i think about war and and, and migration and all these big things in my poems. I also want to think about what, what else can poetry teach us? What, el what other worlds do we build in these poems? This is in another life. The war never happened, but somehow you and I still exist. Like obsidian, we know only the memory of lava and not the explosion that created us. 
Forget the gun down church, the burning flesh, the cabbage soup. There is no bus, there is no border, there is no blood. There are only sweet corn fields and mango skins, the turquoise house and clotheslines, a heaping plate of pasteles and curtido waiting to be disappeared into our bellies. In this life, our people are not things of silences, but whole worlds bursting into breath. Everywhere, there are children playing freely, clothed and clean. Mozote does not mean massacre and flowers bloom in every place shoes are left behind. My name still means truth, this time in a language my mouth recognizes, in a language I know how to speak. My grandmother is still a storyteller although I am not a poet. In this life, I do not have to be. This poem somehow still exists. It is told in my mother's voice and she makes hurt dissolve like honey in hot water, manzanilla warming the throat. You and I do not find each other on another continent, grasping at each other's necks in search of home we meet in a mercado, my arms overflowing with mame and anonas, and together we wash them in river water. We watch sunset fall over a land we call our own and do not fear its taking. I bite into the fruit, mouth sucking seed from substance, pulling its veins from between my teeth. Our laughter echoes from inside the cave, one we are free to step outside of. We do not have to hide here. We do not have to hide anywhere. A torogos flies past my face and I do not fear its flapping. And that is rendered on this cover. Um, beautiful, beautiful cover. It was created by Kiara Eileen Machado, who is a Central American artist um, based in LA. She's a good friend. And um, when I was talking to her about this, I was like, I want you to do my cover and I'm gonna send you some poems. And she responded in part to End Another Life and that's where you have the Torogos there. So just wanted to shout out Kiara, she's amazing. Um, the next poem that I'm going to read is uh, rain, and in a lot of ways, I guess it's a it's a title poem of sorts. Um, but yeah. Rain. I begin here, kneeling by Tana's bedside, begging for a story. Cuénteme un cuento, Tana. Cuénteme un cuento. Tana waters my hair, combs it back into a tight braid. Va pues bicha, venite aquí. Before words erupt, a roar of her laughter like miel, Tana bursts with carcajadas newly hatched and tells of cafetales, of serpents and machetes, of the blistering feel of sun, of the taste of dirt on tongue, of men swallowed by earth de pura vergüenza. Me entendiste, Cipota. Si, I nod. Si, Tana. The first time I ask Tana why she left El Salvador, me dice, porque allá mucho llueve. For weeks, Tana watched sky fall to earth from bus windows. She held on tightly to herself and the thought of mi mami, borders away and alone somewhere in la capital. No hay tiempo para esas babosadas, she thought, wiping her eye made rain away. Tana massaged her bloody feet into silence, her throat aching for just one sip. For years, I am afraid of rain. I am six years old and praying for sun. When rainfall begins, I run indoors, 
get caught by a teacher in a cafeteria corner crying. I am six years old and believe every time it rains, it is time to flee. I am six years old and afraid of being left behind. I am six years old and my blood remembers what it feels to leave a whole homeland behind. A Salvadoran woman once wrote that our poetry has never had the luxury of being enamored with the moon. Perhaps this is why all my poems are about the sun, about coming from women who have survived by chasing it. Women who go only where the light will feed them. Women who leave the second they suspect a flood. All right, this next poem is um, for, I think, it's a way of, of, of honoring uh, my older sister and honoring eldest daughters in migrant families. I think there's a lot of my accomplishments, a lot of who I am wouldn't have been possible without a lot of sacrifice. Um, and I'm really, really grateful for that. Um, and I, I love that this, I think this poem is one that has resonated with a lot of people really deeply and I, I feel very grateful for that. Um, all right. To the eldest daughter. Because she remembered to unfreeze the chicken, steam the arroz, wash the dishes, and prepare snacks for the kids after picking them up from school. Dinner was always half ready by the time mommy got home from her 12 hour hospital shift and I'd emerge quietly from the books I drowned myself in. Those days when I took for granted the things she inevitably sacrificed. Time with friends, the basketball team, her own homework, a childhood learning to play the cello. Instead, she helped mommy raise the rest of us. While I wrote, she changed diapers, washed the cars, opened the windows, mopped the floors, took the heat when I broke the family camera, pulled me aside and scolded me for not understanding our parents couldn't afford the fancy summer programs I begged for. And still, I'm sure she stayed up helping the summer mommy decided to sell burritos every evening after work so they could pay for me to go write poems in Tennessee. Years of my jet setting, big dreaming, sleeping soundly, knowing she was home doing everything that needed doing. And still, she drove six days cross country alone to watch me descend Old West steps, graduation cap and all, the string of roses she spent all night sewing draped over my neck. Oh, hermana, I bow to you now as I did then, wreathed by the grace of every goodness you have given. Ooh, it's <laughs> I, this is the first time I'm reading from the from the actual book, and I think there's also a magic in like seeing seeing the words on on the page in this way. So I feel very very blessed for that. Um, so this next poem um, kind of continues in this theme of um, really honoring. Um, how my how my family has played a role in, in my journey. And I think um, something I wanted to share is that earlier drafts of, of this book focused a bit more on kind of the hardships, right? The hardships in my journey and the things that I had to overcome, right? And then I think I decided ultimately that's not what I wanted this book to be about. I wanted to, it to be a celebration. Um, 
And on that note, um, I also want to bring up my little sister on screen um, because this poem is partially for her. Um, and this is Natalie. Hello. <laughs> and um, she has some really exciting news today. Um, today I got accepted to Kalamazoo. Um, and it was like my, my top school. So, yeah. So she's going to college yeah. over here. <laughs> We're out here thriving. <laughs> um, I am super, super proud of her. And, um, you know, just the way that, that I, I stayed up with her, writing her, her college applications. Um, my, where I'm at also wouldn't have been possible without her, her love and care. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> um, so this poem is called Before the Interview. Little sister's hands tug at my hair mapping her faith in me into my scalp as she braids colochos into crown, holy around my head, then secures with bobby pins, twisting my bun twice and then again until a grin appears wide across her face, teeth brave, bold, like our blood, her eyes beam at me. As I sit on the living room floor, trembling, the morning of the interview, and her hands still tug, taming the mechas of my mind as she declares me a particular kind of royalty, a particular kind of world changer, turns and says, oh, you got this, hermana. And thank God I do, thanks to my little brother's prayers, which he sends upwards from La Gran Mesa in the kitchen, last night's homework still strewn across it, along with the breakfast mommy made, which I am too nervous to eat. So instead, before heading to school, my brother sits calmly in his light, head folded into his palms in prayer. He begs, Yosito, please, please let my sister have her dreams. Let my sister have her dreams. Please God, she works so hard. In the nombre de tu hijo amado, Cristo Jesus, amen. Big sister waits for me in the car, drives me to the consulate, then around the block again, until I am brave enough to step out the car. She holds the hand she painted carefully the night before as she polished their nails, repeating, you're gonna get it, sis, you always do. Like she knows something I don't believe yet, something I'm still learning to hold. She holds it for me now, shakes her head. Nah, sis, how could they possibly not choose you? All right, um, I got two more poems for y'all. Um, this poem is called, um, Instead of Producing, um, it is one of the, the, the poems in this book that I wrote during the, the pandemic um, and really feeling this pressure to produce, 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 right? Um, and I'm thinking like, I'm here writing this book, writing my master's thesis in my backyard <laughs> in a pandemic, right? Um, and my mom brings out this, this bowl of papaya. You know, you, you, moms and their fruit, you know, it's the best. <laughs> and uh, so came this poem. Instead of producing, papaya needed peeling, needed its skin slit along its sides to release the bitter of its milk, needed to spend hours sweetening in the sun, needed to be cut open for its seeds needed saving to turn salve for the stomach, and its flesh needed time to turn a deeper orange, which needed to be served into bowl and be bitten needed to nourish the body whose hair needed braiding and the body whose song needed listening to and the body who had not had a thing to eat yet and the body who had spent all day tending to patients, the body whose legs needed stretching, whose feet needed another's fingers to walk along their soles until the aching stopped, the body whose arms needed flour, water, salt because bread needed to become needed to rest 
so it could rise and bake and once ready, bread needed to be centered, needed the company of other foods, needed a family to gather around and behold its being, bowing their heads in thanks for this blessing. All right. Um, so this last poem, y'all, y'all getting my mama on camera. This is this is big. <laughs> um, um, the poem is for her. <laughs> I'm still over here, over here clapping. All right, let me over here. That's okay, that's good. So this poem ends. Um, this poem, this book ends. Um, with a look to the future. Um, this poem is called, And It Is Green. I have seen the future and it is green. Close your eyes and inhala. One, two, three, four, exhala. Open them now and see with me. Mommy and I still alive. Viejitas together rocking gently on the porch of a wood-framed house in a future worthy of our joy. Mommy's hair mid-length, loose silver over her shoulders, mis colochos tangled back into a single braid. We are mid-laughter. Her brown spotted hands and my own hold each other in the way of the newborn's grip hand wrapped around a single finger, a sign of a flesh claimed as its own. Mommy's eyes glisten green. With her toothless smile, mommy grins so big, she'll save the world all over again. Thank you, Mama. We're all crying out here. <laughs> it's just, um, uh, Javier Samora's blurb on the back of my book warned y'all that these poems would make y'all cry. And yeah, I'm really moved and grateful to everyone for holding space for these poems tonight. I just want to thank you all for that. Give it up one more time for Janelle Pineda. Give it up for her little sister and her mom and the whole family supporting poems. Uh, over here on my side of the screen, everybody was tearing up. <laughs> Wasn't a dry eye over here. Um, and I, I just want to say thank you to everyone for joining us um, one more time. I don't even feel like I have to tell you at this point. If Janelle didn't convince you herself, then I don't know what I could say to convince you to go get this book, but you should go get this book and then you should go get more copies of this book and you should distribute them, you know, pamphlet style, just hand them out to people and be like, listen, this is the good word. This is what you need. The name of the book is Lineage of Rain. Um, you can get it at haymarketbooks.org. Uh, Thank you so much for being here with us. Um, I'm going to read the name of all the contributors one more time. Thank you to Kay Ulandai Barrett. Thank you to Faye Hernandez. Thank you to Vanessa Angelica Villarreal. Thank you to Ji Yun Yoon. And one more time um, for an incredible poet, an internationally recognized poet, you feel me? Um, just, I, I don't even have words to say other than congratulations and you have earned all of this. And I hope you take a second to really receive all of the celebration, which is celebration for you and your work. And is also celebration for the possibilities that you make available to us when we read your work. So. Thank you, Janelle Pineda. Thank you to Haymarket Books. Thank you to everybody working tech. Thank you to the captioner. I 
am so in awe and I thank you so much. And I hope that you will join us next time on the Breakbeat Poets. With that, I say uh, good night and thank you and go get Janelle's book. Thank you so much. Stay safe, take good care of yourselves, support mutual aid efforts if you can. We'll see you next time.